I'm Nathan Crane for CookwareJunkies.com. Today we're going to be reviewing ceramic knives. I've seen these around for a while now and we're here to see if they are something that's worth having in your kitchen. Now we've got two classes of knives here that we're reviewing today. Uh, the one kind is standalone knives that aim to be uh, just a regular part of your kitchen, uh, replacing or supplementing your regular steel knives. Uh, for example, we've got the Kyocera Advance here at $61 uh, that aims to be your number one knife for uh, fruits, vegetables, and boneless meat. Uh, according to all the manufacturers, you cannot use these to cut bones, but uh, we'll see how it handles. On the other side, we've got a bunch of inexpensive knife sets, the kind that you might use if you're trying to furnish a summer rental, or maybe if you own an Airbnb and you want to provide knives, but you don't want uh, to have to be replacing them all the time, or worry that uh, your uh, clients are gonna break them. So we've got a wide variety of knife sets in the range of about uh, 20 to $40. Uh, that can get you that claim they can get you everything you need uh, to compare them all to we've got some steel knives in similar categories like the Victorinox uh, Santoku here to compare against our standalone knives or a the very popular cuisine art uh, ceramic coated steel set to compare to our knife sets so uh, stick around and we'll see what these knives can do All right, it's time to run these through their tests. We've got a nice full lineup today. First off, we're just gonna try them out. Uh, get a feel for the handles, get a feel for the blades, check the balance, check the weight, see whether this is something we wanna use by chopping up some carrots. So uh, we'll cut some coins, we'll do some dicing, and generally see, is this something that I'm willing to use all the time? Uh, after that, we'll roll into a more difficult test with some acorn squash. I'm uh, gonna try cutting these in half. I got, I got some worries about some of these short ones here, but we'll see what they can do if they can handle the big tough skin of an acorn squash. After that, we're going to simulate uh, using them for the better part of a year. We've got a nice piece of ceramic tile, which, they, which the manufacturers explicitly say you shouldn't cut on. So we're going to use that. We're gonna scrape them up real good and then uh, try them out on a pineapple. Uh, first, that's gonna test whether we can get through the tough pineapple skin, but it's also going to see uh, if they can follow the kind of complicated curve while making a tough cut. Finally, uh, we're going to see how they do at a more delicate test with some tomatoes. We'll try a slice uh, as is, then we'll dull them up again to give them the experience of another year or so of getting beaten around, and then cut another slice to see how they degrade over time. Uh, once you've got all that, uh, we should have a pretty good picture of what knives you might want to have in your kitchen. Okay, we're back here for Cookware Junkies after a full day of testing ceramic knives. I am pleased to say that I do not have any cuts on my hands whatsoever, despite some pretty dodgy knives. Oh, uh, you don't want to be cutting on the acorn squash on some of these. Uh, they are more likely to cut you than the squash. But moving up to the top, we've got our standalone knives, the ones that want to be your number one knife. And your number one knife out of this group is the Kyocera Advanced. Uh, this is $61. It is, I would say, the absolute flagship uh, best ceramic knife out there. It is super duper sharp, even after 100 strokes on the tile, which took down a lot of the others in our test, it was made basically no difference. It is super sharp, super light, and it does an amazing job. Uh, all the way through, we compared it to our uh, test to our control group here, the Victorinox Steel, and it was equal or better all the way, but much, much better at staying sharp in the face of getting dulled against the tile. Where the Victorinox uh, really fell down, uh, the Kyocera kept on going, so it is a solid knife that could easily be part of your main kit. Uh, for a lot less money, we also like the Sendaste. Uh, at only $13, this worked its way through all of our tests, uh, doing reasonably well the whole way through. A solid B-plus effort all the way around, but for $13, this is an eminently reasonable knife to add to your collection. Uh, the only problems with it is it's a bit small and it has the handle problem that we've seen in a lot of these, where the, where the blade is uh, too small for the handle. So. 
Uh, when you wrap around it, no matter what grip you choose, your knuckles will always stick out the bottom of the knife and wrap against your cutting board. Uh, it's a bit of a problem, but this is a solid addition to your kitchen for a very reasonable price. Uh, also right up there is the Kitchen Emperor, which uh, started off great and has a wonderful form factor and a great handle, but it really couldn't hold up to getting dulled against the tile. But at $20, you could probably afford to, uh, you know, get a couple of these and sort of work your way through them. It's a good knife for the money, and I'd be hard-pressed to find a better one at the price. Well, unless it's a Sindaist, which is less. Uh, we did try grabbing one that you can just grab at your local uh, grocery store in the checkout aisle. That's be the Farberware here. And that really did not do well. Uh, for the good stuff, it looks like you're gonna have to go online or to a specialty store. You can't just uh, hit up the checkout aisle. Now, when it came to the sets, uh, we found a few winners that could be a good, could be a good choice for your summer rental or uh, maybe just starting a place out. Uh, I would say that our favorite here was the Shenzhen. Uh, this is a set of three knives. Uh, you have a eh, six inch chef's knife, a five inch utility knife, and a four inch paring knife in the set. Uh, they are good and sharp. They held up pretty well to all of our, all of our trials and the whole way through, uh, they were comfor comfortable to work with. Uh, you were able to get a good grip on them. Uh, there's enough room at the, bo at the bottom that you could get your knuckles under the handle and they were generally pleasant to use. And at $30 for a set of three, uh, this would be a great way to make it through, make it through a summer. Uh, also very good, the Taki Up. Uh, this is a set of six for $26. Uh, similarly, uh, you have a relatively good handle. You have, I don't especially like uh, the particular size of the knife here in comparison to the space under the handle. Uh, you get the same problem where you kind of wrap your knuckles on the board. Uh, plus, it can be kind of get difficult to get a good grip if you like a pinch grip here, but uh, they cut very well. They held up to our durability challenges and were generally uh, very good, especially at the tomato test where this just sliced right through beautifully, even after 100 strokes on the tile. In the middle are a lot of sets. Uh, you have a lot of extremely average knives for about $20 to $30 a, piece, a set, but uh, the ones to avoid, uh, we really did not like the Raku's. Uh, this was $27 for a set of two. They were incredibly small. Uh, they didn't cut anything especially well, and including uh, just mushing the tomato to pieces. Uh, it's really too bad here. Had uh, high hopes for this set here. The Way Cool, uh, not cool. This was a set of three for $20, and they too did not do anything especially well. Uh, they were not terribly good on the carrots. They had a lot of trouble with the pineapple and it really felt like they kind of steered a little bit to the right on every cut, which I cannot explain at all, but uh, we each experienced that. The home sport is notable for coming with a phenomenally ugly knife stand uh, so that you can display your poor taste to the entire world uh, in both style and substance. Uh, these knives were not especially good for anything. Uh, They're especially notable for this really tricky spot down here at the bottom. Uh, you'll notice right here uh, that the cutting edge extends all the way to the corner. Our best knives, like say the Kitchen Emperor here, have a little ricasso at the back here so that there's a place for your, finger, for your fingers to rest and not have to worry about getting cut. Not so for the home sport and some of our other losers that have a perfectly sharp corner right here where your finger has to sit no matter what. The big question that we started with on this whole thing, is a ceramic knife a worthwhile thing to have around? Gotta give it a maybe. Uh, they're extremely non-stick, they don't stick to anything. Uh, they retain their edge very well compared to our steel knives. Uh, all of our steel knives were absolutely destroyed by the tile. Uh, there was, they went from, you know, be having a very good cut on the tomato to barely being able to mush it. Uh, they're easy to maintain, they're lightweight, and they're rust proof. Uh, so if you're the sort of person who likes to leave your knives coated in salt water and left to sit outside for a while, uh, these might just be for you. Uh, one problem that we've heard reported with ceramic knives is that they have a tendency to shatter. Now, uh, I'm sure that uh, they can and do, but uh, we took them outside, dropped them on the concrete from about five feet up, and while uh, the Kitchen Emperor lost its point, that was the only damage, and that was dropping at point first. Uh, any knife would lose its point if you dropped it on the concrete from five feet up, 
So I have to say that performed about as well as it reasonably could. The downside on the ceramic knives, uh, they are only for vegetables, fruits, and boneless meat. Uh, you can't cut through bone with these. Uh, you can't use them to crush. Uh, you can't use them for anything that requires prying or jiggling or anything like that. So they're more limited than steel knives. Uh, the Kyocera is extremely good, and I would not mind having this around as an extra knife uh, for, doing veg for doing vegetable prep. It would be a really good companion to my uh, Good Chef's knife. But $61 is a little much for uh, a companion knife that's not my number one. Uh, however, like say the Sendeist, this is a pretty this is a pretty good thing to uh, have around. And if you are looking to just grab a cheap set for a limited amount of time, a ceramic knife set is definitely the way to go. All of our sets held up better against wear and tear than say the Cuisine Art or the Amazon Basics, and some of our best ones like the uh, Shenzhen uh, are really solid performers for a reasonable price. In conclusion, if you are looking for a very, a very good knife and you are a vegetarian and you want something lightweight, uh, you might you have be really happy with Kurosero Advanced. If you're looking for uh, something extra to supplement your regular knives, the Sindaist uh, for $13 is a very fine knife that you could find very useful. And if you're looking to outfit a, outfit a home for a short amount of time for a reasonable price, uh, the Shenzhen uh, could get you all the way through. For Cookware Junkies, I'm Nathan Crane. Please like and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about every knife here on the table, plus many that aren't, head to our website at cookwarejunkies.com and read the full article.